All right, everybody ready to take your notes? We are on page 76, and we're on 3.2, Changes of Matter. Use it. Science Notebook. Two, Changes in Matter. Chemistry for you. Charcoal is a black solid. As it burns, it glows red. Eventually, it ends up as ashes, carbon dioxide, and water. The dramatic changes to charcoal's appearance result from an important chemical property, the ability to burn. Review vocabulary, observation, orderly direct information gathering about a phenomenon. New vocabulary, physical change, phase change, chemical change, law of conservation of mass. Main idea. Matter can undergo physical and chemical changes. Essential questions. What is a physical change and what are several common examples? What defines a chemical change? How can you recognize a chemical change? How does the law of conservation of mass apply to chemical reactions? Physical changes. A substance often undergoes changes that result in a dramatically different appearance, yet leave the composition of the substance unchanged. An example is the crumpling of aluminum foil. While the foil goes from a smooth, flat, mirror-like sheet to a round, compact ball, the actual composition of the foil is unchanged. It is still aluminum. A change such as this, which alters a substance without changing its composition, is a physical change. Cutting a sheet of paper and breaking a crystal are other examples of physical changes in matter. Phase change. As with other physical properties, the state of matter depends on the temperature and pressure of the surroundings. As temperature and pressure change, most substances undergo a change from one state or phase to another. A phase change is a transition of matter from one state to another. Connection to Earth Science The Water Cycle This is the case with the water cycle, which allows life to exist on Earth. At atmospheric pressure and at temperatures of zero degrees Celsius and below, water is in its solid state, which is known as ice. As heat is added to the ice, it melts and becomes liquid water. This change of state is a physical change because even though ice and water have different appearances, they have the same composition. If the temperature of the water increases to 100 degrees Celsius, the water begins to boil and liquid water is converted to steam. Melting and formation of gas are both physical changes and phase changes. Figure 8 shows condensation and solidification, two common phase changes. Terms such as boil, freeze, condense, vaporize, or melt in chemistry generally refer to a phase change in matter. Figure 8. Condensation can occur when a gas is in contact with a cool surface, causing droplets to form. Solidification occurs when a liquid cools. Water dripping from the roof forms icicles as it cools. Okay, so what do you remember about the water cycle? Um, I remember, okay. I remember it's, uh, yeah, um, we got clouds, we got runoff, we got our stuff right there. Nope. We don't have that. No, not the one we're talking about with physical and chemical changes. Okay. Well, um, so, so what, what's the Bible? If the there, if there is water on the ground, the okay. sun comes up and, kind of and cause, it. no, and <laughs> causes it to evaporate. Evaporate. Evaporation. That's it. Yeah. Evaporation. Okay, once we get evaporation, what does it do here? Condensation. Condensation is where water droplets in the morning time are on the ground, right? So condensation could happen, right? So I like condensation. And then precipitation, which is our rain. Is there anything else? Uh, it's missing something. Water, evaporation, rain, condensation. What in the world is that? I know, but what is solidification? Okay, so that is if the water's on the ground and it's cold, then solidification. Right? 
anything else. And then some finish clubs, uh, like whatever it is. Is it because of Soap that? Soap uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Solidification? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, if it's cold, does it like freeze? Yes. So is it like that? So, like sleep. So, so that's kind of like changes in, right? If it gets colder, right, it comes to solidification. If it gets warmer, it goes into evaporation, right? God, that's a lot, ain't it? That's a weird. That's a lot. Yeah, that's back in the day, but it also has to do with what kind of change. What are changes going on? Are they going physical, chemical? What's going on here? Yeah, because phase changes, correct. Because it ain't physical, because you're not like a person or something ain't causing it to change. Right. Like Mother Nature. And it's called phase changes because they're changing from solid liquid gas, right? I got a question. Like say say if there's like a like a like a track of land. Yes. And uh somebody comes in there and like clears it to build houses. Correct. That's a physical change, right? Yes. Could it be? Yes, it is a physical change because something's taken away, correct? But they're not changing how the dirt or nothing is. The dirt's still there. Yeah. The roots are gone. Trees are gone. But yeah, but there are also some chemical changes where the chemical like changes happen. Change pH effect. will change, correct. Uh, that's why we got so many pine trees. They planted in back in the day to make the dirt more acidic. Yeah. God, there's another good thing for you. I'm telling you what, if I could just have your brain for a couple of days. Yeah, he's smart. He is smart. He's smart. I didn't even think of that. And he, every time he tells me something, I don't think about it. The temperature right, and pressure at which got. a substance undergoes a phase change are important physical properties. These properties are called the melting and boiling points of the substance. Look again at Table 1 to see this information for several common substances. Like density, the melting and boiling points are intensive physical properties that can be used to identify unknown substances. Tables of intensive properties, such as those given at the end of this textbook or in the CRC Handbook of Chemistry and Physics, are useful tools in identifying unknown substances from experimental data. Chemical changes. A process that involves one or more substances changing into new substances is called a chemical change, commonly referred to as a chemical reaction. The new substances formed in the reaction have different compositions and different properties from the substances present before the reaction occurred. For example, the formation of rust when iron reacts with oxygen in moist air is a chemical change. Rust, shown in Figure 9, is a chemical combination of iron and oxygen. In chemical reactions, the starting substances are called reactants, and the new substances that are formed are called products. Terms such as decompose, explode, rust, oxidize, corrode, tarnish, ferment, burn, or rot generally refer to chemical reactions. Get it? Define chemical change. Evidence of a chemical reaction. As figure 9 shows, rust is a brownish-orange powdery substance that looks very different from iron and oxygen. Rust is not attracted to a magnet, whereas iron is. The observation that the product, rust, has different properties than the reactants, iron and oxygen, is evidence that a chemical reaction has taken place. A chemical reaction always produces a change in properties. Spoiled food, such as rotten food and bread, is another example of chemical reactions. The properties of spoiled food, like its taste and its digestibility, differ from fresh food. Examples of food that have undergone chemical reactions are shown in Figure 9. Conservation of mass. It was only in the late 18th century that scientists began to use quantitative tools to study and monitor chemical changes. The analytical balance, which was capable of measuring small changes in mass, was developed at that time. By carefully measuring mass before and after many chemical reactions, it was observed that, although chemical changes occurred, the total mass involved in the reaction remained constant. Assuming this was true for all reactions, chemists summarized this observation in the scientific law. The law of conservation of mass states that mass is neither created nor destroyed during a chemical reaction. It is conserved. In other words, the mass of the reactants equals the mass of the products. 
The equation form of the law of conservation of mass is as follows. The law of conservation of mass. Mass, reactants, equals mass, products. Mass is conserved in a chemical reaction. Products have the same mass as reactants. Figure 9. When iron rusts and food rots, new substances are formed due to chemical change. Identify the reactants and the products in the formation of rust. Yeah. Yes. So like you said earlier about how copper oxidizes, it, it, gets, it gets like a film over it and it gets thicker, right? Correct. So it takes up more space. And exactly. Iron, when iron rusts, it eats away at it, so it takes up less space. But it says that chemical reactions can't create or take away. They can't create or destroy mass. So how does that work? So what happens is, is if you take, if you had it in a closed container and you took the item that you had along with the rust and you went and you put it all back together still has the same mass the only thing that's different is you have this particle and like you said there which i thought was very interesting rust is not magnetized why is rust not magnetic it is a byproduct of what used to be metal but then where does the metal go Where does the metal go? That's what I was about to say. Disintegrates to the particles that are so small you can't see it. But if you put it in a closed container, would you see the little shards of the metal by the time you get done? Yeah. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Damien, are you okay? Okay. Now, here is a suggestion. Do you see the italicized words that are in these two sections? Do you see the different list that they have? Did you write them down? On your test, it's going to give you an example like ferment, burn, corrode, rust. Do you know which one it is? Is that a physical change or a chemical change? That's the Do you, yes. Do you see the italicized words? Everybody good? Okay, turn to the next page. On the next page, they have a sample example, okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to look at that, and then we're going to talk about it. We're going to do the first question only, but we are going to do the first question because I want to make sure you understand. So here it says, it says, in the experiment, 10 grams of red mercury 2 oxide powder is placed in an open flame and heated and converted to a liquid mercury and oxygen gas. The liquid mercury has a mass of 9.26 grams. What is the mass of the oxygen? Now, can we weigh oxygen? No. Because it is a gas. That's right. But based on the law of conservation of matter, tells me nothing is created or destroyed. So what makes sense to you? What should we be able to do? Well, we have 10, we have 9.26. What do you think we're going to do with those numbers? We're going to subtract it. I heard somebody say it. And that's going to tell us the oxygen number. Okay? Everybody good so far? So let's look at the question that's asking us. Augustine, are you with me? Okay. So what do you think? is missing here at this table. We're missing after the reaction. Right? So what do you think we're going to do with 109.2? What do you think we're going to do with 10, 03, and 0? What do you think we're doing here? What are we trying to find? What would you do? Well, let's see. I get my calculator. Let me go get it. 
What numbers am I going to put in here? Well, I see 100 and I see 8.2. Do y'all see that? If I take those two, subtract each other, what do I get? Uh, 91.8. I did 100 minus 8.2. My uh, computer, my, my thing must be sitting here. We'll put it in normal and radiant. Does everybody understand where I got 91.8 from? Okay. One more little page, and then we're going to start doing an activity because y'all die. So let's go to the next page. We got just one more minute, and then we're going to do an activity. We'll use the restroom. <laughs> French scientist Antoine Lavoisier (1743–1794) was one of the first to use an analytical balance to monitor chemical reactions. He studied the thermal decomposition of mercury (2 oxide), known then as calx of mercury. Mercury (2 oxide), shown in Figure 10, is a powdery red solid. When it is heated, the red solid reacts to form silvery liquid mercury and colorless oxygen gas. The color change and production of a gas are indicators of a chemical reaction. When the reaction occurs in a closed container, the oxygen gas cannot escape and the mass before and after the reaction can be measured. The masses will be the same. The law of conservation of mass is one of the most fundamental concepts of chemistry. Figure 10. When mercury tube oxide is heated, it reacts to form liquid mercury and oxygen gas. The sum of the masses of liquid mercury and oxygen gas produced during the reaction equals the mass of the mercury tube oxide. Okay, let's get our paper out because God knows we need it. Here, this one right here that I just gave you on your desk. Okay, this is the one we're going to do first. Go ahead and kick the other one out. Now, on this, on this table that you have is your periodic table, right, guys? Has all your elements on it, just like up there. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different colors we need. So open up your crayon bag and get seven colors out. Guys, this is going to be following instruction day. All right, so you've got seven crayons out, correct? So what I would like you to do is with your seven crayons that you just took out, they're all seven on your table. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I've got seven on mine. I'm going to take my crayons, and what I want you to do is, I don't care what color you use, because we're not going to go with the color scheme we got here. I want you to take your crayon, and down here, I want you to use your seven crayons to mark on this handout. I'm highlighting the... Words with my poor little crayons. I don't like that one. We still want to eat this. I think he's got 15 or a thousand. I'm going to take this one for me. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Because this little flesh color is not working for me. Okay, so I'm going through here and I'm coloring them with different colors. So you're just going to put your colors for each one. Oh, these are so close together. I don't like them. Let me get some different ones. Yeah. 
Oh my God, is that? Okay. Have you colored the words? Everybody good? Okay. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to take the color that you used for your alkaline metals. Do you see them? Alkaline metal, get your color. I want you to go through and I want you to color 3, 11, 19, 37, 55, and 87 that color. Okay? So basically, the alkaline metals is everything from lithium down to framing. Everybody good so far? So your paper should look just like mine. I'm walking around. Look at my paper. Do not do hydrogen. Okay? Your paper should look like mine. Yours should look like mine. So I just took my colors and I did I did a lithium down to FR. You make these different colors. Everybody's using different colors. Okay. So now you know, based on your paper, that the alkaline metals are the first column, right? Or the first group from lithium to FR. Now I want you to go ahead and take your alkaline earth metal color. So you're looking for your alkaline earth metal co color. Everybody good? Yes, We're going to go from BE all the way down to RA. So we're going to color everything in the second column. Your alkaline earth metal color. Everybody good so far? Now, can I tell you alkaline metals and alkaline earth metals are alkaline metals, but one's found inside the earth and the other one is found somewhere else, okay? So right now, in group one is alkaline metals except hydrogen. Alkaline earth metals is in group two. Remember, group's going to go down. Now I'd like you to get your transitional metal color. Our transmissional colors are going to be groups 3 through 12. 3 through 12. So we're going to color these all in with this color. These are known as transitional metals. So take your crayon for your transitional metals and color everything in the middle. So we're going to go from group number three to group number 12. Group number three through group number 12. Now we're going to get our next one, which is our halogen. Get your color for your halogen.
your halogen is going to be group number 17. Okay? Starts with fluorine. So that starts with number nine. Go chlorine, bromide, iodine, AT, and TS. So now we are doing halogens. Your halogens are over in group number 17, starting with fluorine, which is number nine on your periodic table. Those are your halogens. Okay. The next one we're going to do is our noble gases. That's going to be group 18. So let's color that in. Noble gases are group number 18. Group number 18. Halogens. Now, I'm going to tell you today is Tuesday, correct? Wednesday, you're going to have a quiz. Yep, the very last group. Helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radiant. Please. Everybody good so far? Okay. Now it tells us the L-A-T-H-A-N-I-D-E. Get your color for that. Do you see number 57? It says L-A. That group. Now this time we're going across a period this time. That means everything in the first period on the bottom is that one. And that's the, the, the first series one? Yep, the first series one. Now, you notice it says series, and it's going to go across the period this time. Okay. And then the last one is the AC series. So let's get our color for that one. And we're going to color that one in. Taylor, 13 to 16 columns in with the last one, too? Nope. I'm going to talk about this. you to do on your paper is write groups and periods just like I've got it here. Groups and periods just like I got it here. I want you to put it right here in the middle. With your pen, write groups. Groups go up and down. Periods come across. Groups and periods. So, if we look at group number 13, yeah. 
that's going to be the boron family. If we look at group number 14, that's the carbon family. If we look at group number 15, that's the nitrogen family. And if we look at group number 16, that's the oxygen family. So these 13 through 16 is the families of the first element that's in that group. Does everybody understand? So from now on, I'm going to say groups and periods. If you look at it going down, first group, alkaline, right, alkaline metals. Second group, alkaline earth metals. Group 3 through 12, transitional. Group 13 is boron family. Group 14 is carbon family. Group 15 is nitrogen family. Group 16 is oxygen family. Then we have the halogen family, number 17, and the noble gases, number 18. Okay? Put your crowns back in your box or your bag. If you have broken crayons, please don't put them back in the bag and put them in the trash can. Put it in the trash can. Then what I would like you to do is I would like you to get up again and you're going to go back to your station and bring these papers with you, both of them.
please work together as a group.